In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Now, almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, and the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and merciful God, graciously keep from us all ad adversity, so that unhindered in mind and body alike, we may pursue in freedom of heart the things that are yours. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the first book of Kings. In those days, Elijah the prophet went to Zarephath. As he arrived at the entrance of the city, a widow was gathering sticks there. He called out to her, please bring me a small cup of water to drink. She left to get it and he called out after her, please bring along a bit of bread. She answered, as the Lord your God lives, I have nothing baked. There is only a handful of flour in my jar and a little oil in my jug. Just now, I was collecting a couple of sticks to go in and prepare something for myself and my son. When we have eaten it, we shall die. Elijah said to her, do not be afraid. Go and do as you propose. But first, make me a little cake and bring it to me. Then you can prepare something for yourself and your son. For the Lord, the God of Israel, says, The jar of flour shall not go empty, nor the jug of oil run dry, until the day when the Lord sends rain upon the earth. She left and did as Elijah had said. She was able to eat for a year, and he and her son as well. The jar of flour did not go empty, nor the jug of the oil run dry, as the Lord had foretold through Elijah. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our psalm response, praise the Lord, my soul. Praise the Lord, my soul. The Lord keeps faith forever, secures justice for the oppressed, gives food to the hungry. The Lord sets captives free. Praise the Lord, my soul. The Lord gives sight to the blind. The Lord raises up those who are bowed down. The Lord loves the just. The Lord protects strangers. Praise, Praise the Lord, Lord, my soul. The fatherless and the widow he sustains, but the way of the wicked he thwarts. The Lord shall reign forever, your God, O Zion, through all generations. Alleluia. Praise, Praise the Lord, my soul. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Christ did not enter into a sanctuary made by hands, a copy of the true one, but heaven itself, that he might now appear before God on our behalf. Not that he might offer himself repeatedly, as the high priest enters each year into the sanctuary with blood that is not his own. If that were so, he would have had to suffer repeatedly from the foundation of the world. 
But now, once for all, he has appeared at the end of the ages to take away sin by his sacrifice. Just as it is appointed that human beings die once, and after this the judgment, so also Christ, offered once to take away the sins of many, will appear a second time, not to take away sin, but to bring salvation to those who eagerly await him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be in your heart and on your lips, that you may worthily and fittingly proclaim this holy gospel in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. In the course of his teaching, Jesus said to the crowds, Beware the scribes who like to go around in long robes and accept greetings in the marketplaces, seats of honor in synagogues, and places of honor at banquets. They devour the houses of widows and, as a pretext, recite lengthy prayers. They will receive a very severe condemnation. He sat down opposite the treasury and observed how the crowd put money into the treasury. Many rich people put in large sums. A poor widow also came and put in two small coins worth a few cents. Calling his disciples to himself, he said to them, Amen, I say to you, this poor widow put more in more than the other contributors to the treasury. For they have all contributed from their surplus wealth. But she, from her poverty, has contributed all she had, her whole livelihood. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. We've enjoyed another awesome week in our beautiful paradise, and it had a lot of good events. We had Halloween on Sunday. We had All Saints Day to honor all those in heaven on Monday. We honored All Souls Day on Tuesday. We got to pray for them as well. Next week, we have Veterans Day coming up on Thursday, and I'll tell you a little more about that in the announcements. But next weekend, we'll honor all of our veterans here at church at all of our masses. One of the most uh, famous coins in the Bible is mentioned in today's Gospel from St. Mark, uh, the widow's mite. It's also mentioned in Luke's Gospel as well. And that word mite is, a, is an interesting word. I suspect that most of us have only heard of it in one other context. That is, if you went to a Catholic grade school years ago, in Lent you were given a little cardboard box and you were told you could put your fair change in that and the money would go to the missions. And that was called a mite box. You might remember that from grade school. I remember it because we used to talk about it among ourselves and figure out why is it called a mite box? I might put something in or I might not, depending on the day. But what was the coin that was actually used? I have way too much on time on my hands. I worry about these things. The Gospel tells us that it was small. Luke's Gospel mentions it was made of copper. Mark does not mention the metal in there. And we know it was not a Roman coin because a Roman coin could never be put into the temple treasury. It would have the image of the emperor on it and that would be against all things. You can't make something in someone's image in the Jewish religion. So it was called a mite because that was the term given it in the King James Bible in the 1600s. But the actual coin itself is a lepton. And coin collectors and historians know it as a very small coin that was minted by the Jews in Israel for about 100 years before Jesus and then for about another couple of decades after Jesus. The Romans gave the Jews permission to print, if you will, their own coinage. 
And as a result, they printed these coins, and there were many denominations of them, but the smallest of it was the lepton. And the lepton on one side had an image of an anchor representing the Mediterranean sea coast of Israel, and on the other side, a star representing the star of David. There would be no image of an emperor on the coin. It was very small, as a matter of fact, compared with our modern currency, it was much smaller than a dime. It's very, very tiny little coin. <clears throat> and it was used uh, basically by, by people who were not from the wealthier classes. They would use more elaborate money. They sometimes even used Roman money, and they would change it into Jewish money. That's why the money changers in the temple, it was an actual profession to convert it. Uh, it had a very minute worth. Uh, historians calculate that a, a lepton was worth about 1 64th of a denarius. Now, the denarius was a Roman coin, and in the time of Jesus, a denarius was worth about one day laborer's wage. So a lepton was 1 64th of that. If you convert that into today's money, uh, it comes out to that a lepton was worth about one-eighth of a cent. So that woman putting in the coins over there was not putting in much money. She was putting in all she had. This is a poor widow. She gave what she had. It was not much, but she gave it. Now, in contrast with the rich who were putting in much larger amounts and probably doing it with a flourish, dropping it in, you know, she probably covered her hand over and let those two little coins slip in there quietly over there. It's interesting, you know, to her that represented her whole livelihood. To a rich person that would have been not even pocket change, it would have been not much. I'm reminded of this, I have not many wealthy friends. I, I do have one. And when I was in New Jersey, there was a family in my parish who was very well to do. They were very good to me, and I appreciated that very much. Well, when I moved out to Vegas, to Nevada, uh, the husband, Frank, came to visit me. And I figured, well, I should take him out to dinner. And so I chose what I thought was one of the finest restaurants in Vegas. It was Hugo's Cellar in the Four Queens Hotel. An absolutely wonderful restaurant. Kind of pricey by my standards, but really good food. And we had a wonderful dinner, Frank and I. And at the end of the meal, the waiter brought over the check. And I really felt that, that I should pay for this. I, for all the good they did for me, I should at least make the effort and spend the money and treat him to this dinner in Las Vegas. So when the check came to the table, I put my hand out on top of the check. And immediately, Frank reached out his hand from the other side of the table and put it over my hand. Now there we're sitting at the table across from one another. My hand's on the check, Frank's hand is on my hand, and we're looking at one another. And Frank says, I don't know any other way to say this, Father Charlie, but I make more than you ever will. <laughs> and I got it. I said, Frank, the check is yours. You know, there's no problem from my part in doing that. But that, that's how it was. It was a very, very small amount to him. But to me, it would have been a big amount, but it would have been worth it. The woman, yes, we can look at today's gospel and say, that poor widow trusted God so much, she gave all that she had, even though it was only, in the world's estimation, very little. But I think there's something more important in today's gospel that we might overlook. And that's, as small as that donation was, as insignificant as that widow was, Jesus, Jesus noticed it. Jesus saw that woman doing it, and Jesus noticed how much it meant to the woman, because Jesus is God, and he knows everything. I would submit to you that if you really think about it, that thought that Jesus knows everything is either the scariest thought you ever heard, or the most comforting thought you ever heard because Jesus knows everything. He knows what good we do. He knows the good we're trying to do. He knows what's in our minds and hearts and how we feel, even when no one else around us notices it. 
I submit that it should be the most comforting thought we know. Jesus notices. Jesus knows everything. God bless you. We stand together for the words of our profession of faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures, he ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. And I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. With great hope and trust, we bring our prayers to God, our loving Father. We pray for our church and all those who continue to teach us God's message. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For peace in our world, for the protection of the men and women and our military forces, for those Christians anywhere who are persecuted, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. And for all those who are sick, all those who need our prayers because of their illnesses, all those for whom we promise to pray. And I ask you to keep in your prayers uh, Janine Ballas Ballister, Bernie Thompson, Sally Ritter, the Sedat family, Joan, uh, sorry, Jan Barone, Joanne Ponzi, Diane Sharon, Greg Vivas, Steve Fortier, Chuck Sperando, Larry Walton, Muriel Pertel, and Sherry Sims, and all those within our own families who are sick. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. During this November, the month of all souls, we pray for all the faithful departed, especially those within our own families and among our own friends. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. The special intention for this Mass are for Catalina and Enrique and Jillian. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Almighty God, we give you thanks for your blessings. Keep us aware of the grace and strength you share with us today and every day. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God, of all creation. For your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed, God, Blessed are you, Lord God, of all creation. For your goodness we have this wine to offer, for to the vine and work of human hands it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Lord, worship me and cleanse me from my Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord set the sacrifice your hands, for the grace and glory of his name, for our good and the of the Holy Church. Look with faith.
favor we pray, O Lord, upon the sacrificial gifts offered here, that celebrating in mystery the passion of your Son, we may honor it with loving devotion through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For out of compassion for the waywardness that is ours, he humbled himself and was born to the Virgin. By the passion of the cross, he freed us from unending death. And by rising from the dead, he gave us life eternal. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy therefore these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking in the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered together by the Holy Spirit. Remember, O oh Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her together in the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, George Leo, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, with St. John the Baptist, with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. <laughs> Oh. 
Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. For those who are enjoying our virtual Mass at home still, we invite you to join with Deacon Dan in the prayer for spiritual Holy Communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament of the Eucharist. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul and body. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart, into my soul, and into my body. I embrace you as if you were already there, and I invite myself entirely to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Well, I have good news and bad news for you. We'll start with the good news. Veterans Day is this week on Thursday, the 11th of November. Here in Laughlin, there are two celebrations that I know of at 8 a.m. at the Pioneer on River Walk behind the Pioneer, between the Pioneer and the river. There's a place called The Point. It's outside overlooking the river. There's an 8 a.m. service, which will be followed by a breakfast, which is free for all veterans. And at the Flag Plaza, which is just north of the riverside along the river, the American Legion and service organizations in Laughlin will have a service at 11 a.m. And they'll be followed by a luncheon free for veterans uh, at the post, uh, post 60 on Bruce Woodbury Drive. I'll be doing the invocation, the prayer at both of those ceremonies. Uh, and I certainly invite you, if you're around town, to come and join us for any one of them. 
As you know, our Christmas party is scheduled for the 10th of December at the Starview Room at the Riverside. Tickets are $25 each or a table of 10 for $250. This year we're using as a theme the United States, so each table would be themed after one of the states of our great American country. And so if you buy a table, you get to pick the name of the state that your table will be designated as and decorated with. Uh, those tickets are available in the church office after Mass tonight. They're also available during the week as well. We look forward to a, a nice turnout uh, for it. We had, didn't have a party last year, so hopefully we'll have one this year. Looking forward to that very much. Uh, you know that this is, from the news, going to be the most expensive Thanksgiving in history. And so our local food bank, the Colorado River Food Bank, is looking for donations of frozen pies to distribute with their Thanksgiving baskets to families in the area. They go up as far north as Searchlight. They go on both sides of the river down here. If you can help with an extra frozen pie or two, they're located just north of the riverside on Laughlin Civic Drive. Who would like to receive it by a week before Thanksgiving? <coughs> uh, so, uh, I have an odd request among the good news. Every year for the Christmas party, I do a raffle. Every year for the raffle, I use as tickets for the raffle the leftover show tickets from the shows we had the year before. And that's usually fine, except that the show the year before this was 2020. We didn't have any shows, so I don't have any business, uh, tickets to use as raffle tickets. So I'm looking for people, if you have any extra business cards or perhaps you want to donate some from your business, if you just drop them off by me this week, we'll use them as the thing. I can't guarantee that everyone will be read, but it will go out and be passed out to the people at the party. So business cards, current or past, we'd be glad to take and drop them off at church anytime this week. We also continue to have postcards I mentioned last week. We live in a postcard. We live in a place that people vacation in and come back to regularly. Those postcards are on the glass top table and they're 25 cents each. That's all the good news. The bad news, 2 a.m. tomorrow morning, daylight saving time ends. From now until the 13th of March, 2022, Laughlin will be on a different time than Bullhead City. This side of the river will be one hour earlier than that side of the river. If you're in Laughlin, turn your clocks back. You fall behind at 2 a.m. If you're in Arizona, you don't have to do anything. But you do have to remember that whenever we give times, we're always giving times in Nevada time because that's where the church is located and that's where the Riverside is located. So please make the adjustments. We always have to adjust when we cross the river for doctor's appointments and restaurants and stores and everything else for the next four months. Don't worry, March 13th is coming. Forward to it. Please stand and let us pray. Nourished by this sacred gift, O Lord, we give you thanks and beseech your mercy that by pouring forth of your spirit the grace of integrity may endure in those your lovely your heavenly power have entered through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. May Almighty God bless you the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.